Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers and this morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Routledge, which is a Taylor & Francis uh, group, um, part of that group. It's called Media and Entertainment Law and it's now in um, a, th a second edition and it's been written by Ursula Smart. This is the book here. It's an interesting area, it's a new development for some people, there's the front of the book, the spine, and you see the back of the book there, a lot of detail in it. The book's quite heavy, it runs to just about 600 pages. There is a very important bibliography right at the back, which is in very important in this day and age. Internet sources and useful websites I found it very helpful too. Then you've got right at the back a relatively short index you can see that how that is now at the front of the book obviously you've got there's the uh, front with a nice forward from Mal 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 um, Michael Mansfield Queen's Council then you've got the contents there um, spread out into uh, some 10 main um, <coughs> chapters then the forward by Michael which is well worth reading is a very much of uh, up to date with what's going on he wrote the um, the forward right at um, the end of 2013. Then do have a look at the preface which sets out some of the changes that have taken place. There's quite a lot actually from Ursula there. And then there are acknowledgements again of what they've actually been using um, for January. And I do find the glossary very, very helpful. You can see there again, there are lots of different words that are used. It's quite a substantial glossary. And then we get into the table of cases and then table of legislation and then we get finally to the chapters themselves and you've got a little index at the front of each chapter which again is quite useful for finding things now what we have here you've got footnotes at the bottom and as i say there's a very important bibliography right at the back but you've got quite a lot of reference points at the side it's slightly different from some books that you might be familiar with but the reference material is quite good because it's basically moving you on to specific areas and again trying for ease of reference for you to find things uh, again let's go to privacy there's the next chapter you can see how that is organized and again the human rights act impact um, and then a whole range of very detailed um, areas of law, for instance, <coughs> art or obscenity. Oh, it's a popular question, that one with the examiners. Uh, has been for certainly the last 45 years that I've been doing uh, studying law, so it's quite interesting to see uh, that things haven't changed that much. You've still got basic arguments both ways. Anyway, the book itself is very, very good value. Um, it's, it's, it's a first-class book. Um, you haven't actually, what I think you have got here, is you've got um, a range of uh, digital formats for this book, so it's actually an e-book. But there isn't, with this, there isn't a companion website yet. It's quite possibly that's something that they will be looking at in future, but do have a look for that because the companion websites are very useful depending on what you're doing with your studies. Now, my wife and I have written um, a review of this book and we've said, new from Routledge, a scholarly yet entertaining read on media and entertainment law with accompanying website. Elizabeth has spent a lot of time on this review because um, she's obviously directly interested in it as um, a person who specializes in this, in this particular area. But we've put it together as, as a main reference and this is what we're saying. We're saying that there are some who profess to dislike the media quite intensely, but most of us love it whether we actively think about or debate media issues or not. What obviously isn't debatable is that media and the entertainment industry, often inextricably linked, present us with the most significant, overwhelming and controversial issues of our time, particularly those pertaining to social media. And this is where the book is, I think, of such great value for the new generation of, of learners coming up who are very, very savvy on social media issues. Us older guys, not a little bit more reticent, I think is the word, about whether we use some of this because of the difficulties that we can foresee they occur. Alas, some of it has proven true in practice. Um, useful for lawyers, of course. 
This book, written as I say by Ursula Smart, is one of the latest publications from Routledge, Taylor and Francis and is a masterly uh, coverage of just about every conceivable aspect of media and entertainment law. The author's flair for clarity of expression and sharp succinct analysis is evident throughout and will certainly be of benefit to law students, graduate students and indeed media lawyers grappling with the morass of materials and contradictory opinions that inhibits this complicated area of law and it is actually quite complex. By the way you do have specialist law reports now of course in this area as well. Members of the public uh, too we think will find this volume a fascinating read. It's a law book with an unput downable quality in our view which is a rare find indeed. Dipping into the book's general comments with the forward by uh, Michael Mansfield is well worth reading for its perspective on the power of media not to mention its impact for good or ill, on social order and human rights. Appropriately, he quotes Marshall uh, McLuhan, that visionary media analyst and commentator and professor of English too, who predicted in the early 60s, some 40 odd years before widespread use of the internet, that the world would become a global village created by the media and the technologies that would shape it. And look where we are at the end of 2014. <coughs> Now, what is known as the information superhighway has become saturated. It's evident that media can and does influence the development of the law and the law in turn must respond to the dilemmas created by the use or misuse of media. And obviously the superhighway is a, an important development which we need to look at for, for the legal issues that will develop. One of the fundamental issues is the tug of war between privacy and the principles of free speech and press freedom. We've been doing a number of reviews in this. It's been running for a long time, this argument, and I don't think it's going to end shortly because there is no real end to it. Being a practical person, I say that quite openly. However, it's important to know what the issues are because even those who are passionate about press, press freedom must admit but when this precious freedom is abused, there must be some form of sanction. Such issues are discussed in the first chapter of the book, right at the beginning, notably in the section on the boundaries of the free press. And subsequent chapters then develop, and I'm summarising here, um, various issues covering privacy and confidentiality, defamation, law of tort, contempt of court, reporting legal proceedings, freedom of public information and obscenity laws which I indicated earlier, extreme pornography and censorship. And again the obscenity law area has always been very popular with examiners uh, because obviously there are many many cases and it is very much the freedom versus where do you draw the line issue in terms of, uh, of any form of censorship. You know, Going back to John Mortimer in the 60s and 70s and up to today with what we're, ha what we're seeing with some of these um, videos that are being produced by um, female stars which are very explicit in the views of some parents. So you see the issues are still there but they're coming in in a different way. So those who study or are involved in intellectual property we think will also find chapters 8 and 9 uh, which cover the salient aspects of, uh, of intellectual property law and entertainment law in, in some detail and it's useful. Obviously there are specialist books but IP is an important area and one that you shouldn't um, you know, put to one side. It's also very interesting. The final chapter on the regulatory authorities focuses on censorship and related issues and mentions in particular the Leveson Inquiry. Whatever your views on it, at least you've got some statements there about what he got up to and what, what has happened, if anything, very much. The book is carefully structured for ease of use and, with its copious footnoting and bibliography, certainly functions as a rich um, resource for research, for those pursuing um, further information at whatever uh, level. There's an accompanying website, um, possibly, um, in the future, but what we've got at the moment is the ebook. Um, and uh, there are over 40 pages of tables of legislation cases and international instruments and treaties, plus a detailed 
glossary of acronyms and legal terms. As I've said about the website, I don't think there's anything available at the moment, but I would imagine that something will be produced in due course. Now let me conclude by saying that this is the new second edition and it presents new developments in the law together with recent cases and it's therefore an essential work of reference for anyone involved in media and entertainment law and its related issues. And the publication date is uh, cited at January 2014. I'm recording this in the autumn of 2014 but you can see from this you've got an interesting comment from Mark Stevens who is a media lawyer, and Michael Mansfield as well, on the back cover, um, basically saying it's a leader in its, air, in its field. And I think he's right. The important things, though, are reporting legal proceedings, a particularly interesting area of law, because there is always the danger that when you exclude the press, you're, seeing, you're getting justice by the back door. So there are the, the basic freedoms which are contained in the current Human Rights Act and what may possibly be a Bill of Rights or whatever we have in the future. The open justice principle I particularly like and I think any, any student of jurisprudence will find that a, a very useful argument because whilst we look at media entertainment law here, we're also looking at the basis of modern jurisprudence as well. And that I think is extremely helpful. Anyway, let me thank you very much indeed for listening to me and um, do have a look at the book. Thank you to Ursula very much for what she has produced. Bye-bye.